If you're into dyeing cellulose fibers with plant materials, you may be familiar with the need to use a mordant prior to dyeing the fabric. Um, the mordant helps the plant dyes adhere better to the, the cellulose fibers. In dyeing cellulose fibers, it's often stated that it's best to use tannin, a tannin solution first, and then aluminum acetate after that to create um, a nice bond between the dye and the material. You can buy aluminum acetate online, um, but that's not something that I wanted to do. So I was glad when I learned that I can make my own um, aluminum acetate, and that's what I'm doing in this video. So basically, the process is to first make sodium acetate, which is basically vinegar and baking soda combined in a particular way at certain amounts. And then you're going to boil that down until the vinegar evaporates um, off and you're going to be left with the white crystal, which is basically going to be the sodium acetate. Once you have done that correctly, you can mix the sodium acetate that results from your boiling process. You can mix, mix that with um, potassium aluminum sulfate, which can be found in the supermarket and the grocery store. Once you mix sodium acetate, which is what's being made here, with alum or potassium aluminum sulfate, you then have aluminum acetate, which is often referenced as being the best mordant for cellulose fibers, such as cotton, linen, hemp, you know, plant fibers. So you would do a tannin solution first and then do this aluminum, aluminum acetate mixture. So what you're seeing in this video is my process of making this sodium acetate. I did this three times and the best result was the very first time that I did it. However, I did not record that. You're going to see in the one that you're currently wa watching, this is not going to turn out correctly. It's going to turn out um, like a thick paste. And even after sitting for several days, it never dried out to be, uh, you know, something that could be in a powdery form. It was just thick paste. So that was the incorrect way to do it. So I experimented again, and you'll see that soon when I do it, and I do get the right white crystals. But if you do this and yours turns out like this, you have not done this correctly. <laughs> you need to to try it again. And you know, um, it's trial and error. That's kind of what I what I learned um, in my process anyway. Using too much baking baking soda, um, and also when you go to boil the solution of vinegar and baking soda, you don't want baking soda so much you don't want to have you so much that you have baking soda literally in your your pan that you're boiling so this is incorrect if it comes like this out like this is not correct i tried it again this would have been my third time doing it and you can see the white crystals begin to form just slowly as the vinegar um, evaporates it's just slowly forming and the struggle here was to keep it from burning or you know um, turning brown which I don't think it's a big deal if it turns inside. brown I just didn't want it to burn so I was trying to hold the pot um, the dish in a certain way so that the part that had already crystallized wouldn't still be directly on the heat and i have it i have the image rotated here because i didn't necessarily record it um the right way so i just turned it this way so you could better see it 
So you can see it forming here, but you can see at the top that it's getting brown, even though I'm trying to hold it off of the hot plate. I'm just basically trying to keep it from burning. But once you, if you do this correctly, you'll have something like this. It'll be, you know, it'll be kind of like crystallizing and not a, a thick paste, like a gooey substance. So there it is completed. And then I'm just gonna scrape it up. Now the very first time that I did it, which is when I had the best result, it was a little bit wet and the instructions I had said to put it on a wet, on a um, coffee filter and just let all the water absorb into the coffee, coffee filter. This one really didn't have that much wetness. It was pretty dry when I took it off. And right here, I'm just gonna combine it with the Alum, the potassium aluminum sulfate in order to make aluminum acetate. Now I'm showing myself measuring here, but I'm not going to show myself pouring the alum into the sodium acetate that I made, but I do combine them. So right here they're combined and I'm just going to mix them together. And this is only a little bit, it's only enough to more than a little bit of fabric. So I'm basically going to put my fabric in a tannin solution and then soak it in a solution of this. Okay, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.